All right, guys, welcome to ARWP, the All Real Wrestling Podcast. I am your host, Eric Novak, and today we have a special guest. He is Ricky Mandel. What's up, fellas? Thanks for having me. Of course. Thanks so much for being on with us. Let's start with the first question, and it's why did you decide to become a pro wrestler? Okay. Um, so, uh, originally I'm from Illinois, okay? So, I'm going to backtrack a little bit. So, uh, I grew up there, and my family decided to move to California. Um, and I went back to visit my sister, who was still there. Now, where I grew up in Illinois... We had, um, it was a neighborhood where we all pretty much grew up together, like all the, you know, like kids growing up in diapers together, you know, that type of thing. Mm -hmm. So when I went back to visit, I made sure to go visit my friends. Now, uh, one friend in particular, um, was pretty much coming with me and my family wherever we went. And on my last day of that particular trip, um, my buddy and his family were going to um, a WWF event and they're pretty much just like, Hey, you've been taking, you know, Chris, which which it's funny because his last name is Novak as well. (laughs) But, um, (laughs) um, but he was like, Hey, do you want to come to this wrestling show? And like, I didn't know much about wrestling other than what my dad had told me. You know, growing up, mm-hmm. um, like about about like Hogan and Macho, just you know, random guys. Um, but uh, you know, I was I just wanted to hang out with my friends some more. So uh, I went to the show, and just from that show, I was hooked. <laughs> awesome. and, and I just knew, yeah. And that that was one of those things where I went from not knowing much about wrestling to you know, watching it every week and collecting the action figures and collecting. I mean every magazine available from WWF magazine to the um, world of wrestling magazines. If you remember those, of course. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> so I just got bit by that bug, just kind of cliche, but it's the truth. All right. Are you still uh, a child at heart? Are you still a collector? Do you still buy figures or magazines like, like relic wise? Um, you know, the only figures I really buy now when it comes to, um, like my wrestling collect, cause I, I collect a lot of, um, I mean, I collect a lot of toys in general. Um, but it's mostly like, oh, there's a Darkwing Duck action figure or <laughs> there's a Tailspin or a random Power Ranger. Um, I'm a big collector of Ghostbusters mm-hmm. stuff. So I have like an entire wall dedicated to my Ghostbusters stuff. But, um, when it comes to wrestling stuff, it's mostly like, um, okay, well, there's like a certain Eddie Guerrero I see that I like, or a certain Chris Jericho, or mostly guys like, um, like one that I bought, this was a few years ago, but I loved when Jericho won the Undisputed Championship because he was my favorite wrestler at the time. And, you know, him winning the title was like, like a big deal. So when they came out with that action figure, where he had like the WCW title and the WWF title, you know, I made sure to get that one as an example. So it's mostly like um, when my favorite, when I see something of like my favorite wrestlers, mm-hmm. or just um, maybe like a wrestler I really like and like specific gear that I was like, oh man, that's cool. So um, not like buying every single wrestling action figure I see, but if one catches my eye, that's that's when I make the purchase. All right, awesome. I I completely agree with you on that. I can tell you the way that you described it, that you do care about like ring gear and stuff like that. And we'll get to, you know, you and your ring gear and uh, a lot of other things that you did, uh, you know, to where you are now. But sure. um, l- let's talk about, you know, your first match. Can you describe to me your first ever wrestling match? Sure. Um, so my first match, um, kind of, it, it was kind of weird. Um, I trained out of UPW in um, El Segundo, California. Um, I started in 05, okay, so that takes us way back to when UPW was still around. However, um, you know how, like, most, I mean, for the most part, from my understanding, most wrestling schools, um, you pretty much have your first match at your school, correct? 
Yeah. yeah it seems like a, you know, a logical thing. Well, um, basically what happened with mine was one day I got a phone call from one of the guys I was training with. Mm-hmm. And he had already been wrestling for a while. It's uh, Hector Canales. I'm going to give him a little shout out. <laughs> um, and he basically uh, you know, called me and he's like, hey, man, do you want to have a match on Sunday? And I was kind of like, well, like, like where, you know? He goes, well, I work for this place in Anaheim called WPW. So I was like, okay. And he was like, okay. So, um, I talked to Shannon who was, you know, my trainer, my mentor. Um, and he basically gave the blessing that I was ready so long as we just, you know, did stuff that wasn't too, you know, complicated or Mm -hmm. out there. Plus like, I mean, you know, when you're working with somebody you've been training with for, I think I was like eight months in at the time, um, you know, I knew we would be fine just to go out there and get some experience, you know? Of course. So, so he calls me, tells me all this. I'm like, sure, let's do it. So basically my first match was in Anaheim, California. Um, and it was against Hector and I get to the show and he tells me, all right, we're going on second. Whatever. Like, okay, cool. Sounds good. He goes, okay. Oh, uh, by the way, it's a two out of three falls match. But, huh? <laughs> huh? So, you know, most, most of the time it's okay. You get like, go out there five minutes, six minutes, seven minutes. Okay. No, like, yeah, half hour, two out of three falls. Like, okay, well, welcome, welcome to the business, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Um, plus at the time, um, I was, or I've always been like a big Christian fan. And when I first started my wrestling career, I thought I'm going to wear one of those mesh shirts like him. Well, I couldn't find one. So I went out there with like this random, almost like rash guard type shirt on. Mm -hmm. So looking back at those photos, it just looks like I'm wearing a t-shirt, which I hate, but it's just something to kind of look back and laugh. Uh huh. Of course. Then there's, I bet there's like a lot of moments like that, you know, in the rest oh, of sure. time. <laughs> That's for awesome. Sure. That's awesome. It's you know, it's cool to hear that like, you know, you earned the, the the opportunity and that you know that's how you got it too. Like you know, someone called you up because. I've spoken to a lot of, you know, people who have run their own schools and stuff like that. And I heard that it's a very hard process. Everyone always messages you that wants to like, you know, have a match, stuff like that. So when you just right. get chosen, it's it's really cool. It's a really cool privilege. Right. For sure. All right. Well, I got to talk about this. You know, this is something that like has got me, you know, as a huge fan of yours. And it's because, you know, that's probably one of the first wrestling I've ever watched. And it's Lucha Underground. And I believe... Right. Lucha Underground itself, there will never be another show like it. It'll ne- there will never be the hype or, you know, just the way they did it. So tell sure. me how that call, tell me how you found out that, you know, you were going to be on Lucha Underground. Okay, so that, I mean, see, that the, the whole thing with that, I, I, I look back and it, it's so such a surreal thing because if you think about companies that are around right now, right? You know, like from, you know, WWE to your AEWs to your Ring of Honors, you know, whether you're reaching out to them or not, if you were to get a phone call from um, like a Ring of Honor or a WWE or wherever, you might be thinking to yourself like, like, okay, that was super cool. But in a way, it's not like unheard of because you're familiar with the company, Mm -hmm. right? So when i got that phone call out of the blue um it, it's almost like is this for real what what what's the lucha underground what what is this you know like i've never heard of it and you know of course i haven't because it was brand new so of course i don't answer the call because i don't recognize it so i'm like uh, yeah okay i don't know who this is i get a voicemail and it's just um i believe the gentleman's name was marty fortman and i think he was the one and i could be wrong about this with everybody because some of the guys might have got called from different producers from the show but he was the one who called me 
and I guess he was like, like I said, like a talent wrangler or something. But he was the one who called me and left a voicemail talking about Lucha Underground and left all these details about like what it was, where it was going to be based, pay, all this stuff. So I called back and that's pretty much how that went. It was as simple as like a phone call that like really just came out of the blue and you know i'm not really sure about you know what what this show is but Mm -hmm. when we start when we just started discussing um oh because that was another thing like you know normally with like um a wrestling company you're gonna get want to come for a tryout okay this was because it's a tv show so they like made it clear like oh would you like to come audition like okay well that that's another way to put it you know mm-hmm. so of course i said yeah and then we set that up but um for me there was no you know i was kind of like i mean i wasn't expecting this but with wrestling you would expect like a ring or something where you could uh you know try out but they just had us cut promos and it's so funny to look back on because they were saying uh names like dario cueto they're like oh yeah the owner's name is going to be Dario Cueto. So cut a promo on Dario Cueto as a uh, baby face, cut a, cut a promo on him as a heel. And I'm like, okay, cool. And I remember saying to myself, or not to myself, I remember asking <laughs> Marty, uh, like, what, what's his name? Dar- Dario, Dario Cueto. I'm like, Dario Cueto. He's like, yeah, Dario Cueto. I'm like, okay, cool. And now I look back at that and I'm like, that all happened. <laughs> you know, like we actually, like it came through. You know, like this Dario Cueto person who they created came through and all that. I don't know what they did with the audition tapes. Maybe they should make like a box set with all that stuff. But (laughs) um, um, that's pretty much like what I remember from my my audition and my my audition and my um, the phone call. Awesome. Started. Awesome, but again, your story in Lucha Underground is just a little bit more, uh, I want to say, creative than others. Like, you had people like, you know, AW uh, roster, Sunny Kiss was on Lucha Underground, you know, Sammy Guevara. So were you, but your character, you held many roles. So tell me the first role you've held, and tell me how they told you you were going to do it. Because you didn't, I don't think you came, like, right at the beginning of Season 1. I think your the I think your role came like maybe like at the end of season one, right? The the disciples, uh, I believe that's what they were called. I could be wrong though. Yes, here's here's what happened. I'll give you that rundown too, real quick. So, um, so when I was talking to them, I wasn't um, signed with them yet. Mm-hmm. Okay, we were just talking. Um, we did the audition. We were talking. We we're discussing money. Uh, and you know pretty much like you know uh just different things but there was no paperwork drawn up nothing nothing was you know but um uh marty elias was the one who was like hey man like i've known him for like a long time now and he was like hey man like i know you're not signed here but this is this is our first you know set of tapings we think or i think you should show up and just meet and talk with the producers who you haven't met yet and put a face to um, give them a face to put with the paper or the, the, you know, the name Mm -hmm. of who they're uh, talking to or speaking with or whatever. So what ends up happening is I'm like, okay, cool. I'll go. So I go and, you know, like I said, the only one I knew was Marty Fortney and he wasn't even there that day. (laughs) So, um, I'm just meeting a bunch of, um, like, the, the producers who I haven't even heard of yet. And, you know, just go, watch the show, and next day, he goes, all right, coming coming back tomorrow? And I go, yeah, I'll be here tomorrow. Cool. So I go over to him, and that day, he gets a phone call in the morning from Chris the Joseph, and the Joseph was like, hey, apparently this is, I guess, how the – conversation went was hey do you have ricky with you yeah um okay good because he has a tryout with uh, hernandez 
So I'm like, okay, <laughs> cool. So my second, uh, the second set of tapings, the second day altogether, um, was my official tryout. Now, what had happened was there was so, so much going on that weekend where guys from, um, they had got luchadors from Mexico coming in and they were supposed to play different characters. And some of these guys, I don't know if they no showed or just couldn't make it or mm-hmm. whatever happened. But, um, Matt Cross, son of Havoc, apparently was supposed to play a character called un America or un America, El Americano. Mm-hmm. And, um, somebody else was supposed to play son of Havoc. Well, they needed somebody to play son of Havoc. So they had, Matt Cross do that and they're like okay well we're gonna have Ricky a basically audition for El Americano so that's pretty much how I came in I was doing my gimmick like I would wear you know my Ricky Mandel gear and you know my sexy beach stuff at the time Mm -hmm. um but they're just like here cut this promo you're gonna be like just pretend you're doing this all-American gimmick I'm like okay cool (laughs) so we did that, and when I came to the back, that's when Tony Jensen approached me and said, like, do we have a contract for you, or have you talked to anybody? And I kind of had, like, a short little, like, just a short little chat with him, and then mm-hmm. he was like, all right, um, I'm going to go print one up for you because we want to sign you. So I was like, oh, cool. Like, <laughs> so, Just casual, right? Oh, I'm getting yeah. signed to the show, all right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was like, whoa, like, you know, one minute. Like, the, the difference between going in, I mean, that was all a matter of minutes. No, think yeah. about it. Like, I went into a match with a tryout, went in, apparently did well enough with a promo, a match, and, like, what they told me was, like, physique and all that good stuff. And then came back, and it's like, we'd like to offer you a contract. Like, okay. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy because, you know, as I brought up, you know, your story isn't like everyone else's and Lucha Underground, and you actually play a bigger role. Like, like I believe there was four seasons, and by the fourth season, you played a huge role coming into the show. So, right. so tell me about like all the creative changes they had for you because you played a few characters, but you right. know, yeah. So okay, so um, the El Americano character I, I played a few times on dark matches. Um, didn't uh, I guess the network thought it was a little risque with like how the promos were being cut and you know all that for the L Ray network. So they're just like, we're gonna scrap that gimmick. Um, and we'll just have you be you for now and we'll figure something out. Mm-hmm. I'm like, okay, cool. And that's when um I just kinda came in as baby face, you know, white meat baby face, Ricky Mandel myself but not myself because i'm not like mr wholesome white meat i'm just not that's not me as a person i'm yeah. more of like a fuck this fuck you got a problem <laughs> you know what i'm saying that's just of me. course um nicest person you'll ever want to meet but at the same time if i had to tell you to go fuck yourself i will you know of course like, yeah, it's just the way it is <laughs> um again casual but, <laughs> right 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 but um so uh, so they're doing that, whatever, we're, we're just doing me, you know, coming in, getting my arm broke by Pentagon, you know, all that good stuff. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but in the meantime, they, that's when they came up with uh, the Disciples of Death. And it was, uh, from what I understand, it was originally the, a trios with uh, me, Mariachi Loco, and the Mormons. But then they decided to switch that up and do like me, Mariachi Loco, and Arhenis as the trios with Mill and Katrina. Kind of like, which, obviously. Which like, I have a question. Is that kind of like a downgrade? Because if you were with Mio Mortez as like a triple threat, like triple, you know, would that have been a bigger role for you? Because uh, technically, like, they were the man, like, like you, you had to go by Mio Mortez and you were going to work with Mio Mortez, right? Right. Um, you know what? I never really thought about it. Mm-hmm. Never really thought about it that way because it all happened so quick. <laughs> I mean, it was also like one minute. It's oh yeah, it's gonna be 
you win, you know, mariachi, um, and then, you know, mill. And then, like, it seemed like that day or, like, the next day it was like, oh, yeah, it's going to be you, mariachi, and Juan as the trios, and then mill. Which, I'm, which to me, isn't because, you know, mill ended up becoming the champ. Um, so, I, I mean, like, I, I don't know how they would have, maybe if... Mill would have just been the champ. Maybe they would have gave the trios to somebody else because maybe they still would have wanted Mill as the champ, and then me and Juan would have, or me and Mariachi would have just been there um, chilling. Mm-hmm. But because they made it as a trios and were like, you know, his guys or his like really Katrina's. I mean, Katrina was really. I mean, if you if you want to break it down, it was almost <laughs> like she was the leader with the stone. Yeah. So in a way, it's more like general and soldiers. Like 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 yeah. yeah I see oh, it yeah, exactly. So and then that allowed for the opportunity to be the trio's champs while um, Mill held the, held the heavyweight title, which meant like there was a darkness over the the temple, and mm-hmm. it just became this big story yeah. you know and so i was i mean looking back and you know any way you look at it I'm, i was happy with it yeah you had um, like i said you know a lot of people in the ground can say they did stuff you know like i said by season four you had your own storyline you had your own character and that's and right. that's one of the things that fascinated me you know because anyone that's a comic fan knows that there's superman and there's a like bizarro superman you know what i mean like right, there's right and you play that role of like I get to run this entire season, start, you know, shit with a lot of people in the temple and like be the the bad guy of the of the whole thing. Right, right. So, I mean, and that that's a that's an entirely different st- I mean, it, I mean, really if you break it down, he um so so the day cuz we lost the trio's titles mm-hmm. as um the disciples, right? And then they gave me the script for uh, like an upcoming vignette and it pretty much said right on there like oh he's going to rip your heart out and then <laughs> S.A. dies or vanishes or whatever so you know first thing that goes into my mind is am I about oh, to get shit. fired? Like, <laughs> am I about to yeah, get fired? I, am I, yeah you know and because and, you hear so many of these stories from these guys in different companies like they write you off and then you, you know it's the, that's a death sentence when you know you know, Lucha Underground was completely different. And, but because it was still new, you know, I I still felt like, do I have to worry about a job? Do I have to be concerned that I'm not going to be used anymore? What is this? Did I do something wrong? You know, and I'm a worrier as it is, you know, it just put more stress on me, Mm -hmm. but that's my, that should be my, another wrestling name in the real world is the ultimate warrior. But (laughs) you know, (laughs) um, so I'm like, well, what does this mean? So, I'm thinking to myself, how can I, I got to do something. I can't just allow, like, if that's the case, I can't just allow, like, okay, well, this is done. Okay, I'm just going to go, you know, <laughs> sit at home and hope for the best. No, that wasn't going to happen. So the week before I got that um, that email, I had watched two things, or watched one thing, read one thing. Mm-hmm. So what I read was about the Island of the Dolls, okay? And there was just one of those, like, creepiest places in the world, and it was one of the top ten. So I'm like, oh, this is interesting. This is cool. I just read about it, like, not thinking much, just kind of like, oh, okay, cool. Mm -hmm. And the other thing I had watched was a documentary on Chucky, like the Child's Play franchise. Of course. So, So I'm learning about how the animatronics of Chucky worked and how many different dolls they had for different different things and you know throughout the movie and what else is so interesting mm-hmm. now i get this email and immediately i'm like oh, i don't know what to do like this this sucks i gotta think of something do i do i bring in um mirror image ricky mandel who i was portraying you know and with my sexy beach and my mirror image championship do i pitch that idea does that fit with the temple Mm -hmm. um you know i'm like or should i try something else and as i was going to sleep like this vision like i'm like almost asleep and i like pop out of this like you know because i've seen this vision of me 
walking down to the ring with um, my hair down and like all black, um, almost like like kind of like the leather pants, not knowing it was going to be like a Johnny Mundo gimmick, but <laughs> um, but still I had like these like leather pants on and this like you know like just like this creepy goth possessed look, and I had a doll in my hand and I was like, oh my god. Like that, that's it. Found like, it. <laughs> yeah, I found like I gotta pitch this. I have to pitch this idea. And I started like thinking of all these scenarios of how I could like enter the temple and go from being like white meat baby face Ricky Mandel, who nobody's seen in a while because I was under the mask as Tresse. Um so but all of a sudden Ricky's back, maybe he just goes and gets beat up and then, you know, I come to the back and you know, I, I think I, it was something to do with the way I set it up was like, I found a package that had the doll in it and I like open. So I guess, I guess like I opened someone's like mail. Why, why, well, why wouldn't Ricky Mandel do that? Right. <laughs> um, so, and then that's where the doll was. And I had this whole setup that I pitched and they were just like, we love it. That's great. But then they were like, okay, but first, Changes. um, well, he goes, no, he's like legit, like, okay, so um, maybe we could, because we were still in season two at the time. He goes, maybe for season three or four, but for right now, um, we want to make you um, like the sidekick, like, kind of like, like to Johnny, yeah. Which like, again, which again, how did you feel about that? Because in my opinion, like I, I want your honest opinion on that, but in my opinion. I think there's no bigger role. You know, Johnny Mundo was the face. He was he was right. the face of the company. For you to be like alongside him puts you in that like Batman and Raw, even though you had your own like, you know, little weird type gimmick they gave you, like you're supposed right. to look like a stalker. You still had a role where every time he showed up on screen, so would you type of thing. Exactly. And that was the first thing I thought of. <laughs> I was because they started giving me scripts where it's like, okay, you're going to be like obsessed with Johnny. And I'm like, cool, I'm all for it. Um, now, what I don't remember was if because they give you these scripts and you kind of say it how you wanted to, you know, and it wasn't really written in any like particular way. I could have maybe went in there and played it like yeah johnny we're cool right yeah <laughs> but like the way i felt and since there weren't any real characters like this on the show like i had a friend who he was you know he would kind of joke around like that you know where he'd be like hey what's up ricky you know like <laughs> he's just like i think he was a co-worker i think it was a co-worker of mine at the time so you know like since i was like older at the you know one of the older not older but you know at that particular job Mm -hmm. I was like 26 or something and like, you know, they had people of all ages and he was just kind of like, yo, what up Ricky, Mr. Ricky, you know? And like, I was like thinking about it and I was like, how funny would it be if like, I just treated Johnny like that? Like, you know, like, what's up Mr. Mundo? You know, like, just kind of like dorky in a way. Like stalkery, and, like stalkery in a way. Yeah, exactly. And it just kind of like, clicked and worked and you know and then obviously they're just like for season four it became like okay well now you're gonna like have this doll on your shoulder and you're it's pretty much gonna be um you know the devil on your shoulder telling you like hey you better choose it's either gonna be me or these guys and since they were like picking on me it was just like okay i've had enough yeah that's another that's thing that was really creative it's like even though you were you know in love with Johnny Mundo, they would still treat you like like dog shit, and, and, and that's right. what built your character in the end. So it's really cool because as the show ended, it ended with you. It ended it ended with like cliffhangers and stuff like that, but also ended with like the major villain was you in that sense. You know what I mean? Like the whole thing, right. which is insane. Right. That's awesome. That's 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 really incredible because you know as. As quick as the show got made, like I've heard, I've interviewed Matt Cross, I've interviewed a lot of people who, you know, ran with the show, Brian Cage and all that. And as fast as, right. as fast as they like did the the show, the tapings, all that is as fast as it ended, you know, no one got the call. Right. Did you get a call? Like, like were you anywhere uh, aware of the fact that they weren't going to come for season five? 
no there was there was nothing it honestly like my thing with that was i feel like i kept hearing oh it might still happen because i from what okay and i've mentioned this uh, on a previous podcast but like i said like don't don't like quote me on this but like for some reason i feel like when we were uh, wrapping season four like somebody from a network so something like i just heard this rumor that they were like oh um we want to keep going with season four and it's like no we just did ultima lucha that's it you know, we can't just like make more episodes, you know, and or, or where are we supposed to do go back and film more and like, you know, like crop it in and edit it in and just do all that. And like, no, we just did, you know, we just wrapped on season four. And then I thought I heard somebody say like, OK, cool. Well, then um, another option is uh, season five, but so with more uh, episodes. So at first I'm like okay cool like maybe it's coming back maybe there's that opportunity um but then you know after a little while you start to hear this guy signed here and that guy signed there and there's this guy has this issue with getting out of his contract and she has an issue getting out of her contract and you know it's just this big ordeal and then you start hearing um you start seeing these little things on these dirt sheets that say like oh this producer doesn't think it's coming back or this wrestler says there's no way it's coming so you know you're like this like roller coaster of emotions of what's going to happen um until finally you start to like realize everybody from the show is going to wwe or going to aew and it's like okay uh, i think it's time to reach out and you know, uh, officially, uh, get out of it, you know? Mm. Um, so you have that freedom to at least try other places, you know? Of course. Um, but there was no, no phone call. There was nothing like that. It was really just like, Hey, maybe there's a season five coming. Maybe not, but you know what? I can't sit around and wait. So yeah, I'm just going to, I'm going to gamble on myself and, you know, Try. Of course, that's what you know. The same wrestlers who did work with Juana Grande six ago, they said that like there was no call that they will come back, and that you know they can't just sit and wait. They just did their own stuff. But you know, it's unique because as mysterious as Lucha Underground was as like a show, because it was wrestling, but it was also a TV show. It was also, a, you know, like uh it was taped and then it was like a, it was an audience there and all that you know it, it's all mysterious you'll never get that again but you got that and it was on netflix and now it's gone from netflix and it's like a thing that'll be lost it'll be like one of those lost archives kind of thing because i feel what their right. temple really is which is really it, unique and it's it's funny because you know um it could very easily be something in the future where, um, you know, like 20 years from now where people are like, that's when it really becomes like even more like well-known, you know, like I could see um, them coming back with like a, like a 20 years in, in the future where their roster is all gone. Like the, the roster they had, except for a certain few who like are like legends already and they have a whole right. new roster. I could see them, scrapping it and redoing it but it's like i heard that there was so many issues you know especially with like contract wise that like right there was a lot of problem and i heard like like i heard there was just at the end of the day they didn't they didn't want to but no show wants to you know get canceled or or cancel or whatever but i heard that there was just a lot of issues that even the wrestlers themselves didn't know about like right along with that well that's just another thing though too is like when you're dealing with um, I mean, don't get me wrong. A lot of the producers, uh, I mean, the Joseph was a head writer, or I don't know if he was a, he was a head writer of Lucha Underground, but he was a writer at WWE. Chris Roach, you know, these guys worked for WWE, and then of course you had um, the agents who were, you know, your Tablets, your Paul Wessons, uh, Vampiro, you know, they just a bunch of guys who knew wrestling. But at the same time, on the other hand, you had. Um, TV personnel who don't know wrestling. They only know TV. And to them, it's like, okay, well, um, yeah, we're going to like 
take a break from this TV show and it doesn't matter. Like they could go do whatever when we're like, no, we need to wrestle. This can't be taken three year breaks. Mm -hmm. Um, and in the meantime, at the, uh, around the same time, like, you know, on the other hand, you got, um, these people fighting over, um, okay, well we'll pay for the show, but we want, t-shirt sales but well no 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 no. we want the merchandise sales because we're the merchandise it's like no like how, how are you gonna have your cake and eat it too man like and they just couldn't <laughs> of course that, that, that's happen. when you say fuck you you know that, that, that that's when the <laughs> that's when that comes out but of course of course there, there was right there was a lot of you know issues just with how they also because it was it was a brand new thing you know before you know there was the independence scene but even if i remember clearly that there, there was like the, all the independent shows, all that, like the ones that are high, like really, really hyped now, like Warrior Wrestling, you know, you have like uh, Russell Pro, you you have House of Glory, stuff like that, uh, right. Future Stars of Wrestling, you know, that didn't exist when Lucha on the Gown, you know, was on. That was like right. the its own thing. So yeah, the, with, with everything that's happening now, we're, we're in the new like uh, future of wrestling and that, that will never happen. The contracts that right. you guys had will never be given because it was just... They took you. They took him and said you can't do anything else after that. But um, let, let's talk about, you know, let's get out Lucha on the Ground. We did a lot of Lucha on, Lucha on the Ground. But let's talk about more about you. Let's talk about, you know, what you've been up to after that. Tell me what you're currently doing. Where can people currently, like, see you wrestle? Or, you know, what new hobbies that you've been doing for yourself? Well, currently I'm not wrestling anywhere because of what's going on. Of course. But <laughs> uh, after that, I was just uh, sticking to mostly, like, West Coast stuff. Mm -hmm. um, um, it seems like so long ago. <laughs> it's kind of <laughs> like I gotta think about what I was doing. Um, I was working a lot in Arizona, um, and then um, I started up with uh, a company. Uh, started back up with a company out in uh, Oregon, um, and then um, as of now, like at the very moment, I. I help train classes out here in Vegas at one of the schools called versus pro wrestling. Mm -hmm. Um, one of the trainers out there. Um, so as far as like wrestling goes, it's just kind of like, um, just studying, just looking to like keep the motivation there, Of course, of you know, course. and it, it's fun to like go back to, um, not start over, but in a way start over to, what made me want to become a wrestler in the first place? Let's let's go back. Let's rewind to those times, those matches mm -hmm. that like inspired me to want to become a pro wrestler. So that when wrestling does come back, I have that like that you know trying to get that like itch of course. that you had. So it's almost like like hitting the restart button. Which is always, yeah. which is always good because it's always good to reinvent yourself. You know what I mean? Like it's always right. a good thing, especially like the fact that everyone knows you as like Ricky Mundo. You know, like I'm pretty sure I've seen like, but just by going through like some of social media, I've seen independent shows promote you as Ricky Mundo. Like you have the you have the Lucha Underground like bandana right. on stuff like that. So it's so yeah, I obviously understand that you know when you're framed as that one thing, that's not what you are. It's not what you want to be known for. So right. you want to do other stuff. Well, like, the other thing, though, too, that I, I really do appreciate, I, I hope, I mean, I could only hope that, like, I, I mean, like, as far as, like, like wrestling today goes, I don't know. Like, maybe people are into uh, character work as much. But that was always the thing that drew me to wrestling. I love characters. So um, I love the fact that um, Lucha Underground gave me that opportunity to portray and really show one of my strengths in being able to portray different characters because I'll tell you anything. Like I feel like any gimmick you give me, I'll make it work. Mm -hmm. And I believe I that. I believe that. Cause like I said, you played a bigger role. Like you, you sat, you watch, and then you played the bigger role. And you're trying to everyone will always know you as, which is also powerful. Like if someone remembers you as that, like for example, uh, you have Matt Cross, who currently is not signed like any promotion. He, you know, he did right. a couple stuff, but people still go, "Oh my God, that's gonna havoc!" Because right. with all that he did, just like what you did, you you will like one or two people that at your show will be like, "I I know you, I've seen you, you did that," and that's the that's how you know what you did sticked and how you did a great job at it. Right, right. 
All right. So as you talked about, like you want to be reinvent yourself and you want to find the best, I'm going to say promotion or company that lets you be the creative mind they want to be. When this pandemic is over, are you, have you, have you, uh, okay, before I get to that question, have you ever spoken to any company, you know, even before the pandemic? Like after, like after you got, you know, after Lucha on the Ground ended all their stuff, anything from that point to now, have you ever had any like appearances at any companies? Have you ever had any conversations with any companies? Not, not any uh, major companies. Um, I've sent out feelers. Mm hmm. Which is always, which is always powerful to send out, you know, notifications, stuff like that, to, to, for them to look at you and see you. Hello? Hello? Yeah, I lost them. Hello? Yeah, I lost you, but <laughs> okay. That was yeah. So you say you sent out fillers? Yes. So, um, you know, as far as that whole uh, like Lucha Underground thing, where they you know called me out of the blue, you know, I, I mean, maybe lightning could strike twice with something like that. But as far as I'm concerned, like I can't just sit around. So that's where I decided, like, all right, here, you know, I, I talk to people. I know people in different places. So, you know, I, I said, hey, I'm not asking you to get me looked at or, or not, not like that was a bad thing. Uh, I'm not asking you to get me a job. Mm -hmm. What I'm asking you for is a phone number or a uh, an email of whoever the hell is in charge of um, tryouts or in charge of, you know, like that type of, uh, you know, who's bringing these guys in to get looked at. Mm -hmm. And, I you know, I knew some people who did. So, you know, that's where I did my part. And it was literally like right before the pandemic happened. So I don't know if that had something to do with it, but it doesn't mean I'm just going to like, okay, well, no, I'm going to um, hopefully this ends soon so I could get recent footage because I don't want to send old footage again. Of I want to send my new stuff. I want to send, hey, this is what I look like now because just because there was a quarantine didn't mean I wasn't working out hard mm -hmm. and I'm still training very hard and I feel like I probably look the best that I ever have. And if I'm not the best I look that I ever have, it won't be long before I do. So, you just want to send all the new stuff and be like, Hey, this is what I'm doing now. This is who I am. And, you know, just keep knocking at that door. That's awesome. That, that's... Or, kick the, or kick the fucker down, <laughs> whichever, whichever <laughs> work, works better. Awesome. All right. Well, you know, it's really cool to hear that, you know, when this pandemic is over, you're going right back at it and you're going to still try really hard. Is there any companies that you have been enjoying lately that like, you've been looking at? Is there anything like, <laughs> You want to talk like talk about about like company wise like what they have that you seek or that you think you'll be a good fit with um honestly man like i just feel with my style um i could work with anybody i i really truly believe that um just because i don't do like i'm not a flashy wrestler i'm really not and you know i like to consider myself an athletic brawler because i could do athletic stuff um but I like that almost that like brawling style, you know? Um, and I kind of feel like, um, if somebody wants to go out and do that fast paced style, I could keep up, but I would be the one to kind of slow it down when it needs to be slowed down and tell that story. So honestly, I really feel like I could fit in anywhere. And that's just the, the truth. Like, awesome. I'm, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. I feel like I could fit in anywhere. Great. That's great to hear. Um, have you been watching any of the product? Have you been enjoying specific products lately? Um, yes and no. I, you, you know, honestly, at this point, I kind of watch a lot of stuff just to keep up with what's going on. Mm -hmm. And if I know, like, my friends are having certain matches, like, uh, when Sunny Kiss was wrestling Cody, I made sure to watch it. Mm -hmm. Like, I made sure I was going to sit and, you know, like, I would be there for that. Or Scorpio Sky versus Cody. Like, I'm going to make sure um, I'm watching that night. As opposed to, 
Okay, uh, what do I got going on right now? Okay, well, I'll catch that tomorrow, or I'll catch that in a few days. So, uh, honestly, I, I keep up with, you know, I, I try to keep up with everything. It's, it's most, it's easiest when, I mean, anybody could go for, you know, could agree with this one, when you have it at your fingertips, like a Hulu, or yeah. if something's on, like, an actual TV station, as opposed to, like... I don't even know, like certain, you know, because not every company is going to be on a station that, you know, everybody has. Like my, my, I don't have cable. I have Hulu, Netflix, uh, uh, you know, Disney Plus, you know, all that crap. You know, I have app, mm-hmm. app stuff that I watch and then I could catch whatever show is on there. But if it's on like an actual cable provider and that cable provider, um, it's on a certain channel. It's a little bit harder to uh, keep up with. But at the same time, you also have Instagram, which pretty much gives away everything before it even would air, which is kind of unfortunate. Yeah, for, yeah. for the fans. <laughs> of course, and I completely understand that. You know, I I'm, I love that I I got drawn here. I love that we got to like. Go back in time and talk about current stuff. You know, supporting is always important. Where can people, you know, support you? Where can they buy your merch? Where can they follow you? Where can, where can you know, people just see what you're doing or your matches even? People like... Sure. Um, <clears throat> I have my, obviously, like, Instagram, Twitter, and my Facebook all under Ricky, Man- uh, Ricky underscore Mandel. And most of my, like, YouTube stuff, I have the link right there with my... Um, uh, in my Instagram bio. I'll put that in the bio for this video too. Right. Cool. Cool. Um, and that's where I, you know, up until I wasn't having matches anymore because of, you know, what's going on. Um, it was all fairly like recent stuff or like stuff that I like literally just came across. Um, that I, I didn't even, I, I mean, there's like matches on there where, like I don't even know how I found them. I was like, <laughs> oh, I remember this match. Like, how, how where did this come from? Like, okay, cool. Well, I'm gonna, you know, copy it, paste it, and put it on my channel. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much anything you want from me is all on my Instagram and um, Facebook and Twitter. I don't really use Twitter as much. I should. I'm gonna start. <laughs> I'll start using Twitter again. If I, get yeah. some, if I get ten, if I get ten followers right off the bat from this, I'll start using it all the time. If I don't, <laughs> well, I'll start. I'll still start using it all the time. Well, I'll, I'll put <laughs> all the information. I'll put the, all that information in the bio, and hopefully, everyone who's watching this video will definitely do that because they love wrestling. You know, that it's, it's just sure. part of it's part of the game. Um, but you know, I I do want to know. So, where, where do you buy your merch? Do you have any merch coming out, or or any merch that are that you have out well, now? Uh, nothing right now. Uh, like fortunately everything was sold out um (laughs) unfortunately (laughs) yeah yeah um but um that's kind of like i'm kind of in the you know switching stuff up that's what this pandemic has given me time to do of course to reinvent reinvent so that's where like once that starts and then once i'm able to go perform again that's where all that new stuff is going to come out and i think i think um people will like it because it's definitely um different awesome something something different than what (laughs) you know what i've done similar similar but different enough where you're like huh okay i get it that's awesome i'm looking forward to seeing it i hope everyone is listening to this also i mean who knows maybe maybe you'll get back in wrestling very soon you know the right right times are times are moving faster now but all right. <laughs> all right. Thank you. Thanks so much for coming on. Thank you, everyone, for listening to the ARWP podcast. And we'll see you guys next time. All right. Thank you so much.